Would you like somebody to touch your balls? In the criminal justice system, sexually based offenses are considered especially heinous. Is there a way that I can get out without having the risk of cancer upon my body and without getting sexually molested? Victims unit who investigate these vicious felonies are members of an elite squad. These are their stories. How often in all your experience do you see a prosecution willing to go to all the trouble and expense and time of a jury trial? Then all the threats that must be implied a year in jail, whatever these max penalties are being threatened are. No fine, and yet offering eight hours of community service to just make it all go away. Unless if you meet special conditions. What special conditions? Person family with uh, children or 75 and older, or if they're pre-checked. So you, you're aware that you guys do not have the right to discriminate based upon age? Not all ages are protected by constitutional requirements, but I, it's actually only over a certain age. I'm sorry, but I don't, I don't recognize the Constitution as protecting anybody. Very good. I'm born with my rights, are you not? Do you believe that a, a document that was signed over 200 years ago gives you rights? So are you going to recompense me for that cost? Since your website indicated that I could use a metal detector? I'd be happy to walk out and put a good in word in uh, with the airline. Okay, so would you like to walk with me back to the airline and see if we can get that. the money back? I mean, it's their, it's their determination ultimately. Well, isn't it your fault? Well, it doesn't. I don't know at this point that it matters who's at fault. It, what matters is getting you a resolution to your situation. Getting you a resolution to your situation. So you're willing to put in a good word to the airline and yeah. if their policy says they can't, then will TSA well, refund me? I'm going to hope for the best on this. You're not going to leave my side, are you? No, I'll go out with you. You promised? Absolutely. Okay. I'm good for my work. You promised? Absolutely. Okay. I'm good for my work. Let's go. So, just going to brief the officer real quick. What you want, what you want, what you want. They'd be willing to refund your money. Maybe they won't. What airline is it? Alaska. Okay. But I figured we could go out there, and right. if, that's what, if that's what he's comfortable doing, is saying, I, I just want my money back, and and I'll go do something else. I mean, I'd, ha I'd be happy to help that process yeah. along. Um, you know, I mean, I don't want him to be feeling like he's forced to do anything. Really oh, I feel like you're limiting my right to travel. All right. We're not getting very far. There's, no matter how long you stand well, here. Well, I want answers to the questions. Okay, but well, they're not going to get answered here. And no matter how long you stand here, the options are still going to be A, B, C. If there's not going to be a D, there's not going to be an A. And why are you speaking for TSA in this matter? No, I'm speaking for the airport. What? Because, how do you represent the airport? Uh, okay, it says Port of Portland Police. I assume that's correct. City of Portland? Port of Portland. Okay, what's that? You're standing in it. Okay, so you have the authority the, to remove you if you do not are not willing to go through screen. You don't have the authority to remove me. No, I do. No, you don't. That would be assault. No, it wouldn't be assault. Yes, it would it be, I'm in a public place. Okay. Right now, just pay attention. If you want to record it, record it. Since you're not willing to go through screening, I am. They've all no. They've given you the options. You're not willing to take the options they've given you. So I am. I, are you going to do A or B? I'm willing to go through the metal detector, which All is right. listed on the website. Done. You're Next. not willing? No, we're done. I'm telling you, I'm giving you a lawful order as a police officer that you have to leave. Well, I don't recognize that authority. Why, okay, why, let's try number two. Right now, you are not allowed to be here. Why? You're not going through the screening process. I'm giving you a lawful order to leave, or you will be arrested for trespass. Why am I not allowed to Robbie, be here? Robbie, are you listening to me? I am. I'm asking because you Because you're not going through the process. You'll have to walk out here. Are you, are you attempting to not listen and answer my questions? Would you like to walk out here now? I would like to go on my flight, which I paid for. 61. And that lawyer, who's called the DA or prosecutor, reads the police report, and they decide if they, if they think they can win the case, then they then a piece of paper that says State of Oregon versus you issues, okay? Mm -hmm. So then you go to court, and the judge forces you to have a lawyer, 
James Effie, the TSA supervisor on duty, was also present. We were stand, standing slightly off to the side and just prior to entering the actual screening area. Mr. Estenberg told me that he had checked the TSA website and knew that he was entitled to go through a metal detector to be screened. He told me that Mr. S.A. refused to allow him to use the metal detector and insisted that he go through a cancer-causing body scanner or be sexually molested. I explained that no one wanted to expose him to a cancer risk and that he would go through a standard test down. Estabrook became agitated and raised his voice as he asked me if I had ever been molested. When I replied no, he shouted that I would not be able to judge if he was being molested or not. I'm going to stop now and tell you I never read a police report to find out what actually happened. I read the police report to find out what the police would lie and say happened at a trial so I can give you better legal advice, okay? So when I read this, I am not reading this as, as if it, this were an accurate depiction of the event. Okay, but they are they have to, once they disclose this to me, this is the evidence they have to present. James Essie explained to Estabrook that the options uh, explained to Estabrook the options available to him. He could go through the body scanner, AIT machine. He could go through a pat-down, or he could decide not to fly. Mr. Essie offered to assist Estabrook in requesting a refund from Alaska Airlines if he decided not to fly. Estabrook became more irate and ranted about his right to fly. He insisted that the TSA website said that he only had to go through a metal detector and not be exposed to cancer or be molested. Mr. Essie told Estabrook that he probably misinterpreted what was on the website and again listed the three options available to him. Go through the body scanner, go through a pat-down, or decide not to fly. That's true. Estabrook went back to arguing that he was free to fly and not be molested. Officer Curl had arrived as cover officer. Mr. Essie had been dealing with Estabrook for about 15 minutes prior to my arrival and had already explained the process and options available to Estabrook numerous times. I asked Estabrook if he was going to choose any of the options and that there were no other options available to him. He continued to argue with Mr. Essie. I told Mr. Estabrook that since he was not going to fly, that he had to leave the area. I pointed towards the terminal and asked him to walk with me. He refused and then told me that I had no authority to tell him to leave. He told me that I was a police officer. Oh, I told him that I was a police officer at the Port of Portland and that as a representative of the airport, I was telling him to leave. Esther Brooks said that he was flying and that he would be screened via a metal detector. I told Estabrook, I'm giving you a lawful order to leave the checkpoint now. Okay, I'm going to interrupt and say the reason why he wrote it that way is because that's the definition of interfering with a peace officer, uh, refusal to obey a lawful order. So that's why he wrote it. I'm giving you a lawful order to leave the checkpoint now. Estabrook told me that I could not tell him to leave and he would not leave. He said that he did not recognize my police authority. I repeated, I'm giving you a lawful order to leave now. Estabrook again refused. Officer Curl and I took Estabrook into custody. As we attempted to handcuff him, he fell to the ground and refused to put his hands behind his back. Estabrook yelled as we tried to force his arms behind his back and then screamed that he was being kidnapped. Once he was handcuffed with two sets of cuffs, he refused to stand up unless we did not touch him. We were able to stand Estabrook up and he yelled that he was being kidnapped as we walked to the upper road in a transport car. Prior to placing him in a patrol car, I checked the cuffs for tightness and double locked them. Mr. Burke refused to give me his phone number and accused me of conducting an unlawful search when I ran his name off of his Oregon ID card. Officer Curl issued Esther Burke a 90-day exclusion from Portland International Airport. He read the exclusion notice to Mr. Esther Burke and issued him a map of the areas he was excluded from. Officer Steen Vorden transported Estabrook to MCDC. We need you, if you're going to even pretend, have a pretense, to be an advisor to Robbie, to understand that despite the power, as you call it last time, the coercive power of the state, to enforce its will and its powerful people in robes and their opinions, we need you to, even if you're going to pretend to do this, to go on the evidence 
that we're still challenging jurisdiction and that despite, what, seven, eight, nine hearings, they're all just attempts at arraignment. They refuse to allow clarification of relevant issues on the table. And they steamroll him with threats of violence in cages and all that that implies. He's here because he doesn't want to be sexually molested by a TSA. And yet they'll threaten a strip search and a camera over the toilet and a window to male and female guards who walk by. And oh, by the way, all this is being recorded with no mention of a cruel and unusual punishment. It's not our fault, nor do we give a shit that it's crazy as hell and it's corrupt as hell from the jump for everyone. We care about this here and now. And if they have a problem with that, you know, every little problem that's been going on in these attempted arraignments is going to come up at a trial. Under no circumstances, Robbie asking these questions so he can just go about his business. Oh, okay, now it's time for opening statement. Now it's time for jury selection. Now it's time to do the, the cross-examination and the testifying and the closing. No, no, no. We're not offering our legitimacy as if that's a courtroom in a trial. It's a star chamber, and this is a steamrolling because this country is not a free one, and it's dominated by tyrants and dictatorships. Because something that is intentionally left vague cannot be clarified. It cannot be understood, yes or no. It has to be clarified in order to be understood so he can make sure he's not even committing perjury. But they don't want to hear any of that, of course. They just, oh, no, sorry, we find that you're not, you're refusing to enter a plea. I'm going to enter a plea for you. Shut up or it's contempt. Um, this is over. Come back in five weeks. And if you say one word, it's jail right now. And then when he comes back in five weeks, every judge after that says, well, guess what? I see it here on my computer, so fuck you. Now, if you think that's called a successful arraignment, I might as well start questioning the legitimacy of Harvard itself. Will the court read an instruction to inform them of their obligation uh, uh, regarding jury nullification? Absolutely not. The state does not present evidence. It never presents evidence prior to the entry of a plea. I'm not going to be accepting a plea until you're willing to give up all your evidence. The state does not present evidence. You're telling me that my liberty is at stake. Now, if the court really wants to do this, and it wants to threaten me with jail time, where I will have a captive audience of many other people who have been screwed over by the state, and they would be more than happy to learn everything that I have learned about what this so-called government is, and you will begin to deal with more and more clients like myself, then that's fine. They can they can certainly do that. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me, sir. That you get... Excuse me, sir. Might I be striking on a nerve if you don't even want to let me speak the words out into the air? The Constitution that you swear an oath to that we know means nothing, but that you swear an oath to speaks nothing of its applicability based on geographical physical location that is your opinion sir we will not be jailed and fined because of your opinion it requires evidence You're calling me delusional the definition of delusional sir is believe believing in things absent evidence okay we are doing nothing but asking for evidence that's what we're pointing at when we talk to money. So if you're writing something for the court and asking them to clarify what they mean by this fine, we are pointing at the fact that they are forcing us under penalty of a cage to ish go to this bank to use this certain form of one currency in the world to acquire enough of it somehow and to give it to the court in order to satisfy the men with guns. We are pointing at that. We know we, we know you know we're pointing at that and any any attempt by you to brush this off as, oh, you know what money is, is beneath us, sir, frankly. We're on the big picture. We know what's going on here. We're one of the few that are effectively challenging it and get used to more of us coming because it's a new age with the internet of transparency and accountability against the lawyer class. You're charged with a peace officer and a short test test in second degree, the law is in the country, and you do not know who you're playing with your weapon, and you still have to use it. I'm sorry, objection, point of clarification. I'd rather not have an attorney. I have some questions about this um, hearing um, because I don't quite understand why I'm here. I was just about to explain that to you, can I? Okay. I'll explain some more things to you. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Here's, here's the case started. So you can get more information. Police reports, legal advice, there's a lot of things you need before you... Sir, do I have the right to a fair and meaningful hearing? You do. 
Objection. Clarification. I do not wish to move this forward. I would like to ask these questions today to gain an understanding of this hearing, and I do not wish to have an attorney today. I do have some very important questions that I would like to ask. Why do you need an attorney? Objection. I. Are, are you are you saying that I should not I do not have the right to represent myself? I'm saying not today. If you get some legal advice, to think about it, and make a knowing and intelligent voluntary decision later. Objection. Point of clarification. Shouldn't rush through something like this. What was that a no? It's not today. Okay. Objection. Your a point of clarification, sir. I I, I am here under duress. And I do not wish to move this case forward because I believe that it can be handled today. So to be clear, are you saying that today I do not have the right to plead guilty? Not today. Objection. I, I, I point of clarification, are you, are you saying that we can move forward with this hearing when there is an issue of jurisdiction? This is called an arraignment, and if there are issues about, about jurisdiction, you're aware you raise those, so that's where standing next to you is to uh, assert your right to raise legal challenges in the, in the future, but we want you to get a chance to talk to lawyer first. Uh, I object to having an attorney. I object to any, oh, I know. any okay. you're going to counsel at this point. You're coming back to court in this respect. What are your well, grounds for dismissal? Because I'm wearing a black robe and you're not. So what are you saying that I need to do in order Contact to not be thrown attorney. in jail? I need to call the proof this person and make your court dates. Well, I, I don't want to go to trial. What I want is to make an informed plea of guilty. I just still have that question about jurisdiction, and I I, I just want to see yeah. the evidence first. Um, I haven't seen any evidence that there's actually a. Plea. Are you like Posse Comitatus or one of those people? Is that your issue? Do you, do you not think that the state of Oregon exists or has jurisdiction over you? I don't understand. Cause I, I just don't understand your question otherwise. Because only like Posse Comitatus people um, are the people that, that don't accept the jurisdiction of the state. I just don't understand your question. I don't know what that means. I don't know Latin. Um, I do you know. That so those are the like right wing like idiots like those people in Dallas County. Those people. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know what the You're not like, who they are. Well, those are the people that said that the government had no right to their land and all that shit. Are you one of those people? Um, no. I don't... Um, I mean, do you take advantage of anything the state of Oregon has to fucking offer you? Absolutely not. <laughs> I'm just a person... Do you live in Portland? We're, we're, we're... What's your deal? I, I, my, my deal is I'm just trying to live my life, and if there are people who... Um, come up and say to me that they have authority over me, then I would expect that they would be able to prove that with factual evidence. The prosecutor has not submitted any evidence. Um, they, they, they don't have to legally, that, that's not, this is not, that's not something they have to prove. That one just goes without saying. Um, I think the judge indicated that uh, he was proceeding with the hearing without evidence of jurisdiction. Um, he uh, that that's where I think I, I I think he's just he's he's just an idiot. That's all I think about him. Well, I mean, he, um, I mean, he may be an idiot, but the law says that they don't have to prove that. The law says all they have to prove is that uh, you were in Multnomah McKinney on the day they alleged. They don't have to prove they have jurisdiction over you. Well, you need to understand that. And first, I need to see the evidence of jurisdiction before I am prepared to plead guilty. And that's all, that's all I'm asking for is evidence. What do you want them, what do you want them to show you? What exactly, what piece of paper, what does this piece of paper say that you need to see in order to, to, to resolve the case? What exactly do you need them to show you? I really don't know what they would have, but. I well, then you can't, can't, you can't have it both ways, Mr. Esterbrook. I mean, you understand how silly this sounds. Well, you can't say I'm not going to do something until they prove X. And then when somebody says, well, here, what kind of proof do you want? We'll get it for you. You go, well, I don't know. I don't know what I need to see. Well, but that makes no sense. You understand that? Well, I'm saying that as the prosecutor has the burden of proof, then whatever evidence that they would submit, we could look at and see if there is evidence of jurisdiction. So far, they haven't presented anything at all. And the they've satisfied me, and they've satisfied Judge Todd. Uh, if they satisfy the new judge, will you do it? Well, the the um, 
Todd indicated that there hadn't been any evidence, so they were proceeding with a hearing without evidence, and that's a that's a denial of due process. It wasn't a hearing, sir. It was an arraignment. It was an arraignment and hearing. It, you know, any time the state has a burden of proving anything beyond a reasonable doubt, that's only at one specific kind of hearing, and that's called a trial. So you just you can't have it both ways. You can't say like I'll plead guilty, but only after I've had a trial where these things have been proven. See, the reason why they want people to plead guilty is so they don't have to have a trial. So you can't. Do you understand what I'm saying? You can't say. I will plead guilty, but I want a trial first. You have to either say, I want to go to trial, or I will plead guilty. You can't say both. And what you're saying to me, with this cockamamie stuff about jurisdiction, which I think what you're saying is you want to contest the one of the elements of the, the crime, what you're saying is, I want to have a trial first, and then maybe I'll plead guilty, and I'm sorry, but it doesn't work that way. Well, okay? Well, what I'm, what I'm saying is the even the officer had to have some sort of evidence of jurisdiction before making the decision to yeah he gets a paycheck from the from fucking Multnomah County yeah he he knew he had jurisdiction he knows where he where he works he knows who he works for he he got total proof you want to see his pay stub well yeah and I I I agree that he works for the state of Oregon um I'm just I, I also have questions about that like doesn't the judge also get checks from the state of Oregon. Um, the judge gets checks from the judicial department. Not really, sort of. Well, I mean, does he represent the state of Oregon? The judge? No, he's a fucking judge. He doesn't represent anybody. So he doesn't work for the state of Oregon? And I'm, no, I mean the the, the, the lawyer, the the DA is the the prosecutor who works for the the for Multnomah County. Right, I'm just the DA is the only person that represents the state of Oregon. So I'm just wondering where the judge gets his money then. The judge is employed by the state of Oregon to make sure. Uh, he he works for the circuit court. He's a circuit court judge, pro tem, and his job is to uh, to make sure that the laws are fairly um, enforced, and you know the trials of you know, people who are uh, accused of crimes are given due process. That's his job. He doesn't represent anybody. He doesn't have a fucking agenda. So clothing dictates a person having jurisdiction over me? Like, I'm If their clothing is that of a police officer, can we stop dicking around? I mean, maybe this gets you off, but this is really annoying to me. I have told you that the time to, to challenge jurisdiction is a trial. You want to have a trial first and then plead guilty. It doesn't work that way. Uh, I will see you on Thursday. I can't take it anymore. I have to go scream into a pillow. Damn! My concern, though, is that um, him forcing me into a contract with you under duress um, could be uh, misconstrued as me accepting jurisdiction because you. I don't think so. You are a I don't think so. State. You don't believe so? Okay. No, I'm not. I'm not. I have nothing to do with the state. I don't work for the state. I'm not paid by the state. I work for a private law firm that has a contract with the state to provide representation to people who uh, can't afford lawyers. And so I have nothing to do with the state. So, no, I don't think there's any implicit um, acceptance on your part of the state's jurisdiction. So I think you, you, you still have that ability to fight the state's jurisdiction over you. Millions, literally millions of prosecutions have taken place with this end of evidence and this kind of charging instrument, and nobody has ever questioned the jurisdiction. This is the situation that exists in all prosecutions, these set of circumstances, and I believe they are sufficient to support uh, the pro your prosecution by the entity known as the state of Oregon. That's my opinion. Let's just get you to that place where you can do what you want to do. So there's 
you know, you can keep saying, is there any evidence that the entity known as the state of Oregon has jurisdiction over me? And I can just keep saying, I don't understand that. So, I mean, you're not, you're not necessarily um, saying that it is an invalid question. You're just saying that it's never been something which you've looked into or had to look into. I've never been asked that question before. Okay. And, I mean, that's, See, that's my, my there, there is no such thing as an invalid question. All questions are valid. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I'm, I'm. Well, this is one of my concerns: is the way that you say that millions of people have been prosecuted. This yes, time. isn't that terrifying? Yes. yes, it is concerning. You should be concerned. Does it seem to you as though um, judges and prosecutors? assuming jurisdictions, even without evidence, um, could be a mechanism used to violate due process rights? Well, um, I'm not sure I understand that question either. Um, yes, if that's what people thought was going on. I mean, there are rules to prevent them from from uh, abridging various rights, due process, whatever. Uh, but they are very secure and confident that the state of Oregon has jurisdiction over you. They judge if they try to explain to you why they think the state has jurisdiction would simply say, well, in my experience, when somebody is charged with a crime and it alleges that it happened in Multnomah County on the charging instrument and Multnomah County is in the state of Oregon, then in my experience, that is sufficient to show the state has jurisdiction over this person. That's what they're going to say. So I guess then I would ask, is it your opinion that physical location is what gives a person jurisdiction over you? Yes, under the law, I believe that is. The, the way the, the law functions and, and the court's function is that jurisdiction is imputed. I think that there is evidence to the contrary, but um, I'll agree to disagree for now. Okay. About all that you said. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Bye-bye. Thank you, Megan. Brenda, I think that was certainly not a good idea. Objection to the fact that the last judge um, forced me to sign an agreement against my will. He forced me to sign a document, um, forced me to enter a plea even though I had intended to enter a plea. If you wish not to represent yourself, you can do that. And does the prosecutor have the burden of proof here today? Uh, no, because we're not in a trial setting. So was the judge on um, March 1st, Todd, was he incorrect to say that the prosecutor did have the burden of proof that day? I don't know. And I'm not going to discuss this any further with you now. You have several different options that I've just outlined. Does the court have jurisdiction over me at this time? I believe so, yes. You believe so? Mm -hmm. And what facts are you using to make that assertion? The fact that the state has filed an information uh, uh, alleging that you committed uh, misdemeanor crimes. You said earlier that you were assuming that the court has jurisdiction and there any factual evidence that you used to support Look, that. I'm not going to discuss this any further. I've outlined your several different options. You need to pick one now. Or we can put you in jail for wasting the court's time and being in contempt of court. I'm not going to engage in a philosophical discussion with you about elements of jurisdiction. Okay, that's nonsense. I'm not attempting to waste anyone's time. Well, you are. So why don't you go have a seat in the back and decide on your own what you want to do. We'll call your case in a few minutes, and then you let me know. Ms. Fox, we have a constitutional scholar out in the hallway. Maybe yeah, yes. I know. I, um, <laughs> I She's familiar with him. Issue. Uh, are we off the record? Yeah. My understanding of what Mr. Westerberg wants is he wants to plead guilty, but he wants to have a trial first. I explained to him <laughs> that doesn't work, and he 
he, his big issue he hammers is whether the entity known as the state of Oregon has jurisdiction over him. And I said, fine, what kind of proof do you want? And he could not articulate that. And I said, I said, but they're going to offer this proof. You responded to their summons. You came to court. So aren't you tacitly admitting that they have authority over you? And he goes, well, if somebody holds a gun to your head, you have to do something. So that's where we are. Well, I think he's been reading too much gibberish on the Internet. Well, I don't, I don't know what you guys want to force me to do, but I'll do whatever you want me to do so that I don't have to go to jail and face your violence. You're on our patrons. <laughs> Well, I mean, this this, this whole system of violence is possible. You're threatening being thrown in jail. No, I'm not. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I don't think I would. You said that if I did talk to you, I would be in jail. Yeah, I'm not sure. 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 I'm not not as your lawyer, I'm just calling the court. Uh, Mr. Esperson told me he wants to verbally bring uh, a judge to a lawyer. You would be quiet for a minute. May I you must you? pick one of those now. May I exercise my right to defend myself? Yes, if you want to go to trial. If you want to take the case to trial, however, you will need to execute a written waiver of attorney. You will not set the case for trial without a written waiver. And if you refuse to sign that, you can't go to trial. Okay. Well, I mean, have some questions about that, but I'm a little afraid to ask them at this point because you threaten me with jail. You, I'll, I'll give you a couple of minutes to ask any questions, but I can't promise that I have good answers for you. Are you upholding and applying the laws and performing all your duties today without prejudice? I think so. I think so. Mm -hmm. What I would like to do is to have evidence of jurisdiction before I make a decision. We're not doing that. I move to dismiss based on the fact that the prosecutor has not submitted evidence of jurisdiction. That motion is denied. What do you want to do? You have me under duress right now. So whatever will I, whatever you want me to do, sir, to ensure that I'm not thrown in a cage and that um, you know, I can walk freely out of here, then that would be great. Okay. Do you want to go ahead and plead guilty to these violations? Um, not without evidence of jurisdiction. Okay. I'm going to find you in contempt of court, and you're going to go to jail. I agree with that. May I ask why? Because you continue to waste our time. You refuse to uh, uh, elect one of your various rights, and uh, and I can't deal with you any further. Where would all the donkeys come from? Uh, but you're not going to be heard here. Uh, you can be heard when your case is called downtown. Point of clarity. Steve, no, you be quiet. Steve? I'm not allowed to speak. I'm not allowed to defend You need to be quiet. Or you're going to be held in contempt so quick it'll make your head spin. Damn! And for the record, Your Honor, Jenna Plank representing the state, spelled J-E-N-N-A-P-L-A-N-K. For some reason, uh, I have been prevented from entering a plea. I have not yet been arraigned, and um, I don't know why this has been drawn out as long as it has. I believe that your record will indicate that I have been arraigned, but I have not ever at any point entered a knowing involuntary plea. We show an arraignment on uh, March 1, 2016. Well, arraignment is not an evidentiary. Uh, objection, point of clarification. I'm not asking about evidence for the hearing. I'm asking if the prosecutor has met her burden of proof and established jurisdiction so that we can proceed with the matter. I'm wondering why it is that you have the right to adjudicate this matter and why I do not and if, whether or not you're assuming jurisdiction in this matter. I have jurisdiction. Are, are you saying that the rules are applicable to me and that they're, the prosecutor has given evidence establishing that these rules are applicable to me that you're charging me with? All rules are applicable to you that are applicable to other people in this courtroom. You're not special. It has appeared 
in the court file that you have been arraigned, and we're just going to proceed that way. Objection, point of clarification. I understand that you've objected. I don't need to continue this dialogue. Is that an opinion that you're relying on? Step aside. Is that an opinion, or are you relying on facts and evidence? You have been arraigned. Objection. You say you want to plead. I've given you the paperwork. You haven't filled it out yet. I'm going to ask you to step aside so we can continue with this proceedings. Actually, I'm going to order you to step aside now. Okay. Well, I feel like I'm being threatened, so I will go. My name is John Schlosser. I'm a public defense attorney. If you'd like, I can ask the judge if she'd appoint me as legal, not your attorney, but as a legal advisor. If you have some questions like you had out there, if you'd like some things answered. I don't believe that you're able to answer. I'm attempting to be informed of the cause and nature of the proceedings so that I can be arraigned, and she's trying to indicate that I have been arraigned and I have not been arraigned. Right. That's what I mean. If you'd like me to try and help answer some questions, I'm happy to do it. If you don't, that's fine. I just thought I'd offer it. Well, I'm okay talking to you right now. I mean, if you really feel like you have the answer. So you were asking about whether or not the district attorney has provided proof to establish probable cause. Is that what your argument was? No, jurisdiction in the matter. So the information is the initial burden. The state files it, and then at that point, there's no obligation on the state until you challenge that, and the way to do that is to go to trial. At trial, they would have to meet all of those burdens. You're not obligated to take a plea before trial, and so by voluntarily entering a plea before actually going to trial and challenging the state's charges against you, you are telling the court that you're accepting the charges and admitting that there's sufficient facts to prove your guilt. Thereby, jurisdiction is just instantly established. Jurisdiction is presumptive based on the district attorney's information being filed. The district attorney's office has an ethical obligation not to file charges with the court that they don't believe to have jurisdiction. State of Oregon, all you have to do is put the nature and cause of action. You don't have to list facts. So you're telling me that you can proceed without jurisdiction? I'm telling you they can proceed without presenting evidence. If they have attempted to continue to threaten me by forcing me to come here without evidence of jurisdiction, then what is the recourse? There isn't any because that's not a real thing. Well, how is the court able to force me to do something if they do not have the authority to do so? You're getting into the whole political system, and I'm not going to argue with you about it. What will happen if I don't show up? You have a warrant put out for your arrest, and if the police pick you up, they'll put you in custody, and you'll be put in jail. Okay, so what you're telling me is that men in uniform and badges with guns will come and take me and put me in a cage, correct? I just don't know why I'm being railroaded. I am telling you things. I am not submitting to an interrogation of the questions you wish to answer. Objection. Point of clarification. I am attempting to enter a plea today and get this matter resolved today. I'm simply seeking clarification on whether or not has the prosecutor submitted evidence establishing jurisdiction, yes or no? Yes. Earlier the prosecutor told me that she did not know if there was evidence establishing jurisdiction, and I'm just wondering how you are aware of this evidence if the prosecutor is not. What dates do we have? I'm simply asking for clarification on this because you have stated on the record that – Have you noticed that I am the judge and you are the defendant? I am not subject to cross-examination at any time you wish about anything you wish. Ms. Roberts, are you under duress? I believe there is evidence that you may be under duress at this time. 9-1-4-9-6. Mr. Estabrook, does the trial date of 9-6 work for you? No trial date works for me. I understand. Okay, we'll set it for trial then. I'm attempting to enter a plea today. I have not been arraigned, and I object to these proceedings going this way. I have motions on the table, and I have clarifications on the table, and you are not addressing them. And I'm wondering, are you acting without prejudice today? I see that you've been held in contempt of court before. It can happen again. Is it contemptible to ask for relevant clarifications? It's contemptible to impede the process of the court. We're here for a simple process, which is to set trial dates or take a plea. We are not here to discuss 
jurisdiction. You do have to leave here. I will tell you what the consequences will be if you do not vacate counsel table now that your proceedings are over. Okay. Do you know what those consequences will be? I do not. I would hold you in contempt of court, and I would ask the sheriff to take you into custody. Okay. Then I will voluntarily leave. Okay. Thank you. What do you think I look like? A jackass? You sure do. Okay. Well, today is going to be the day. Hold on a second. Today is going to be – you haven't been arraigned? No, I have not been. I've made that clear on the record, and I've also made it clear that what the record says is in error when it says that I have been arraigned. So I still have a clarification. Well, I'm going to take judicial notice that you've been arraigned if that's what the record reflects. Objection, point of clarification. How can you say that I've been arraigned when I have not been informed of the cause and nature of the proceedings? I'm taking judicial notice of the record, so let me see what the record reflects. The record reflects that an arraignment did occur, so I am finding that an arraignment did occur. Objection, point of clarification. Are you saying that I have been arraigned on an involuntary plea? I'm saying that a knowing or involuntary plea was entered on your behalf. A plea of non-guilty was entered on your behalf. I'm finding I'll write a minute order as to that. I would object to that because I have not – I have made it very clear that my intention is to enter a guilty plea. Okay, you can change your plea to guilty plea at a different time. Am I allowed to make a plea in the first place? So let's talk about – well, the arraignment occurs, so we're past that. Objection, I have not been arraigned. I'll note your objection for the record. I have not entered a knowing or involuntary plea at this time. I'll note your objection for the record. Let's talk about your – you need to be quiet while I'm talking. Let's talk about your decision to have an attorney or not. Today is the day you make that decision. Well, I will make that decision as soon as I've been arraigned, and I'm asking as the prosecutor – You need to make that decision now. As the prosecutor submitted any evidence that the court has jurisdiction to impose upon me. That is the clarification I have. The court has found, based on the arraignment that has occurred, that there is jurisdiction. The court has found, based on the arraignment that has occurred, that there is jurisdiction. You need to make a decision right now. Objection. Listen. Listen to me. I'm going to hold you in contempt if you don't decide by 11 o'clock today whether you want to proceed as your own attorney or whether you want to have an attorney. Let's make that decision right now. So you're forcing me under duress. We're not on the record to show that it's under duress and it's not under duress. It is under duress. This is an outrage. You guys are acting criminally. Yeah. 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 I don't think that I can't get a call from that. I think she does. So what I will do, and I'll let you know, that the only reason I'm holding on to this order is because I'm under duress. So I will autograph it. And then I'll leave. Yeah. Thank you. 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 Thank
title are you in this case? I mean, I know you have an association, but if you're not listed as the representation, then what are you listed as in a way that implies a duty on behalf of the prosecutor? Well, first of all, it's a legal advisor uh, is my role in this case, and uh, questions as to how she interprets her responsibility to keep me in the loop uh, were best directed to her, or rather to Mr. McMahon, who is currently handling this case. Her duty is up to her opinion of what her duty is in regards to interacting with someone that's associated with the quote-unquote defendant here. So there's no legal authority which is cited which says that this is something that she has to do. She's simply doing it of her own accord. The answer would be the answer I gave. Yes, it's a very distinct smell. It's a smell of bullshit. The court is not going to entertain questions of the sort that you are uh, that you were raising, certainly not in front of, of a trial of fact, if in fact you have a jury trial. Uh, the jury's not going to get to hear any of that. I guarantee it. Just remember I said that. Um, regarding instructions to the jury, mm -hmm. what is your opinion on whether or not the judge will allow us to inform the jury that no human being on the planet can punish them for casting whatever verdict they want completely regardless of any instructions anywhere um i'd say that the the, the chance that they'll do that is really vir vir virtual zero it's an issue to bring up because the original founding document that we use to guide all further instructions clearly has an intent of 12 and only 12 and yet we've kind of slid this six in there to help the cause of the state and increase the power of the government. They just make it up along the way. We, we all know that this is a steamroll. We all know that whether it's a judge or whether it's a jury, everything's going to be possible to just give this the appearance and credibility of a legitimate hearing in a courthouse and lawyers and judges. We know this. We're not allowing anybody to old oh, little sleight of hand shell game it and like we're not aware. So it doesn't seem to make any sense. To give the legal advice to Robbie that, hey, you can go ahead and file a motion to challenge jurisdiction before a trial when you're saying, oh, no, you've already been arraigned. And you know that that implies that jurisdiction has already been established, despite the fact that if you were to listen to all the recordings, you would clearly hear that at no point does Robbie give any kind of voluntary arraignment. You're giving incorrect information, conflicting information, and you're not telling Robbie the truth. You're not even on his side. It, it, the idea that an arraignment requires some sort of consent of the arraigned, some sort of uh, some sort of acknowledgement on the part of the person being arraigned that they are, uh, understand these things, these these fundamental principles, uh, uh, or or else the arraignment doesn't get to go forward, uh, is a, is a, is in my opinion a false belief. What is a one thousand dollar fine? Define dollar define fine that's silly no dollar so instead, dollar of, has instead of instead of just answering the question you're trying to gaslight me no yes you are you're saying oh that's silly well if it's so silly if it's so evident so obvious to everyone and to me included if you know the answer then tell me i that we both know would be for example that robbie doesn't know what money means if you thought that the answer was so obvious then why don't you just answer the question Speaking, the court uh, accepts payment in cash. It accepts payment in check. Cash of what? Checks of what? U.S. money. The same kind of money you use to make other purchases. Well, let me, let me, knows let, the let, answer. let me answer your question. He's not, he's not going to answer no, because he knows it will incriminate him. It, no, I, yes, I, you're I, not answering because I you know answer, it will incriminate him. I will answer your question. You don't want to incriminate yourself. Incriminate? That's silly. Explain I'm, to I'm me not what exactly... Understand. No, you're not asking for any money at that point. Okay, the court is holding a gun to my head and saying, this is what you have to do. No, it's not doing that at all. Uh, at the, at, this, at yeah. sentencing, at it sentencing, may make sure. the... So are you saying that I only have the right to be informed of the cause and nature of the proceeding at sentencing? No. Okay, so, so the, the judge read out what he calls these charges. One of those penalties, I don't understand what it means. And I need clarification. Don't shake your head. So if it's so obvious... Then all you have to do is say, what is U.S. money? Show me a, an example, a form, so that I can take a picture. If the court imposes a $1,000 fine, I want to know what do I have to do when that happens 
before I get to sentencing. I need to prepare right now. Right, but the nature I'm, of your I'm, question is the nature. Do you have your questions? Do you have factual evidence to substantiate the claims that you are making? That is the nature of all of my questions. And, and the answer is always is that's for the tr- that's that's what a trial is. For. Well, presumption of innocence. Well, the because problem the problem comes not from my inability to understand what is being said, but it comes from the fact that when I ask relevant clarifications, n- they're concealing the answer for me. That's, that's your you're, like you're concealing the answer of no. what this thousand dollar fine is. No, I'm not concealing anything. You, you know as well as I what it is. No, I don't. Well, I, I, bullshit. I, mean, I, I just don't buy it. I haven't I ever buy. been fined. Look, when I, I when have. I go and I get this water, they're not saying, I'm fining you so such and such. I am making a trade of something for something. Right. This is so I want to know. Tra- a okay. fine is not so, a commercial and, transaction. Uh, I, so I want to know. Tra- is exactly. that punitive action? So I want to know, in this punitive action that they are forcing me to do something, what specifically are they forcing me to do when they say $1,000 fine, sir? Well, first of all, again, the, the, at arraignment, the court does not have an obligation to inform you of the actual fine that would be imposed because there's no even a sum. Because if I'm not if asking you, about the number, I'm asking what is a dollar. A dollar is a hundred pennies. A hundred pennies of what? A yeah. penny of what? A penny of what? I'm not playing this game. It's not a game, sir. You're you're Move on. You're, you're telling yes. me that my liberty is at stake. Now, if the court really wants to do this and it wants to threaten me with jail time where I will have a captive audience of many other people who have been screwed over by the state. And they would be more than happy to learn everything that I have learned about what this so-called government is. And you will begin to deal with more and more clients like myself. That's fine. They can, they can certainly do that. But if they are going to threaten my liberty, I want you to know I'm not playing games. You are the one playing games because you're trying to use your clever speech in order to deceive me into believing that a thousand dollar fine is something other than what it actually is. And again, I come back to that question. Do I have the right to be informed of the cause and nature of the proceedings? Because you said yes, that I do. And as of now, I have not been informed of the cause and nature of the proceedings. Therefore, I have not been arranged. Okay. Next. So are you going to inform me of what is meant by a fine and what a dollar is? Uh, no. Why can't you just say it's a this quote unquote Federal Reserve note? It's a green piece of paper printed by the Federal Reserve, a third party bank. Why well, can't so you just say that? Federal, is it the Federal Reserve notes that the court is going to force me to try to acquire? Is that what you're saying? Of course, that's what a dollar is. So you're saying yes, the court that's is going. It, the court that's is, what a dollar is. So to clarify, you are saying yes that the court is going to try to force me to come up with Federal Reserve notes. Well, no, because I don't know that the court necessarily is going to impose. Okay, a fine. if the court imposes a fine, it will be a fine on U.S. currency. That's so, correct. but what you're saying specifically that U.S. currency that the court is going to try to impose upon me and force me to acquire and give them our Federal Reserve notes. Right. Is that a yes or no? Not exactly. <laughs> this guy will not admit that the Federal Reserve is a third-party bank, and you have to go to them to, however which way, to get paper in this system to go pay off men with guns so they'll leave you alone because you didn't want to be molested at an airport. So, who am I talking to? I know, I know, Foxy's in there, but Miss Robbie. Please. Oh, hi, Robbie. And that's Joe was talking to you. I don't know, but yeah, I mean, I'm totally interested in in the subject. Um, the idea of you know keeping them at the arraignment stage for what nine trials that that gives me a brain wood. That sounds hilarious. Like where they well, can't even bring charges against you. Do you know why they do that? I have or no why? clue. I'm gonna take him out. Uh, he's already um, expressed interest in coming out on patrols with us, so we're gonna do that and make that happen um i'm i'm also fascinated to see this happen in a courtroom when is your next court thing robbie i can tell you it's in december i think it's early oh. december yeah i'll definitely no, show up no, for that no. one la 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 la